أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله التيبين الطاهرين المأسمين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بقوله الحق وهو أسلق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عباد أني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداع إذا دعاني فليستجيب لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله عن الرذين صلوات على محمد وآل محمد I begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has blessed us with this wonderful night, Laylatul Qadr, a night which is better than a thousand months, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahar. It is better than a thousand months because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets the pace for the rest of the year for you and I to abide by spiritually. Tonight is the night of charging the batteries, recharging our batteries. It's the night of commitment because it is the night in which our destiny is displayed to our living Imam Al Hajj Ajjallah Ta'ala Fajr. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Because Allah says, Tanazzalu al Malaika to a roho fiha bi itni rabbihim min kulli amr. The angels and the ruh, which is a special kind of a spirit that comes down, it comes by the permission of Allah, بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ When it comes down, this ayah you will see is in the indefinite state, meaning it comes every year. It's not only once, but it comes every year. Therefore, when the angels bring down the decree, there has to be somebody to receive it. And therefore we know one of the evidences of the necessity of a living Imam with us is the fact that he is the one who is the Hujja, who receives as the protector, as a witness, and as a guide for humanity against the existence of Iblis. Because remember, Iblis is alive among us, and he is hidden, and you can't see him, and Allah is balancing that in the highest stage of examinations, and hence our living Imam is in a state of occultation and he is also the Hujja and he is certainly present in this room. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this Laylatul Qadr, the night in which you and I need to reflect. It is a night in which you and I need to indulge in prayer. Because though it is a night of reflection, and they say, the Holy Prophet has said, one hour of reflection, true reflection, is better than a thousand rakah of night prayer without thinking. So being reflective, asking questions, sitting, thinking, as we recite in, in Surah Baqarah, where Allah says, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Surely in the creation of the sky and the earth and in the alternation of night and day are signs for people who reflect. أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ are people who know. Allah mentions who are they? They are the ones who reflect, who think. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ They think about Allah. Why? Why do they think about Allah? Why don't they think about money and life and everything else? Because they know the source of all wealth, the source of happiness, the source of paradise, the source of reward, the source of consolation, the source of all good is Allah. They know they need to be good. They know they want to be happy. They know they want to be calm and collected in their hearts. So the dhikr of Allah is natural. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Standing, sitting, lying on their sides, they're thinking about Allah. Tonight, the night of Qadr, is the same kind of a night where you and I need to make 
a resolution and also we need to dedicate tonight not to vain talk not to silly talk talk discuss but it should be spiritual something that the minute you walk away you feel like you want to go to sleep with a smile you feel there is there is a reason to live in this world you feel good you wake up in the morning you take a deep sigh of relief you're happy that yes i made my night good and a new day is starting and i'm filled with potential i'm filled with vision you see this is how imam ali alayhi salatu wasalam used to live the minute he would open up his eyes he would put his right foot on the ground he says la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no authority no strength except you oh allah and the imam would pray to allah thank you allah for giving me one more day why because in the sleep allah mentions in the quran some when we take the souls away from their body temporarily some we hold back meaning you die in your sleep so the imam is thanking allah thank you for giving me one more day to worship you yet this is the same imam bear in mind you might think it's a contradiction this is the same imam who was waiting for his death tamanna al maut he had this tamanna he had this desire of death to return to his lord so that when allah says ya ayyatu an nafs al mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan maradiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wow what a deep verse meaning that the mutma'inna the nafs al mutma'inna the one who has succeeded the pleasure that allah is giving this being by telling him first come among the believers the worshipers fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati subhanallah look at the depth of the verse of the quran that the quran is not saying that you came for paradise you came to be associated with true people of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore you are in paradise salawat ala muhammad wa ala muhammad So it is a night of resolutions it is a night you and I should say if I'm tired then you should say well I'm going to forego my tiredness because it is a night I can't lose you see when concerts take place or some big actor comes or some big event is taking place people days months in advance are selling tickets and people are planning they're placing their money in their pockets they're looking for money to buy that ticket then they go out on the streets to look for tickets they buy it early then they plan and then they wait in line sometimes sleeping with under tents or with you know sleeping bags just to get that moment when the gate opens up they go and grab it and they're all excited all of the material things that are worthless in reality when you look at it is just a passing cloud subhanallah yet they plan it they are focused on it they're moving towards it and i i'm i'm amazed when i see that around the world that when you see concerts sometimes you see them filled with tens of thousands of people i said they all made it they all have the time it's amazing isn't it huh you go and watch the baseball games super you know the the uh, the world series or the super bowl it's packed now how long is a super bowl few hours you know how many one year in advance they're planning their tickets people plan and then they go and you're looking at this entire field filled with people He said, "Look at this lahwan wa laib. This is all entertainment. Football is not a bad game; it's a good game. But look at the importance people place, even in our Muslim ummah. I remember many years back, there were family. There was a family. A young boy comes and says, 'I can't come for Laylatul Qadr tonight because the Super Bowl is taking place.' And my father wants me to go home to watch the Super Bowl with him. I said, 'La ilaha illallah. What a shame! What a father! What an ignorant father!' I said in my heart." He needs to be awoken this ignorant father who has been blessed with life and has been blessed with a son who's feeling the remorse of having to go home to watch the Super Bowl yet his father is more excited to watch than the son what a shame you would think that an older man who's a father now should have come down to the earth and grounded himself and realized that that's just sport and play laylatul qadr khairu min al fisha do you even know what it means you find football stadiums filled because people make the time and they go after it and it's a passing cloud and they grab it well brothers and sisters those people are fooled if you think that that's important what's important is gatherings like these 
Whether it's in this center or any center in the world, any masjid, any center, it doesn't matter. But make it a resolution that tonight is a night I grab it. I don't have time for anything else. This is a priceless ticket between me and my Lord. This is the one that's going to save me, not anything else. Not a football game, not a baseball game that a team wins, they take the millions. We pay them the millions. They don't even know us. We stand in line for them, for them to look at us and we're happy. We stand in line for us to kiss their hands. Is it worth this hero worship? Compare the worth there compared to the worth of an individual who's looking for his blessed Imam. How about that individual? But look how the Imam explains. He says, the person who the Imam visits, the one who is worthy, the one who Allah has chosen, who is better? What is better? I'm serious, and don't get me wrong about sports. Sports is a great thing. And the, 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 the prowess of the sports industry is amazing. What humans are capable of doing. And that is a gift of Allah. But it's got a priority. It's a shame when a believer in Allah between you and I. If the non-Muslims are doing it, we can give them an excuse. They're not Muslims, they don't know. What about us? Where is our commitment? Tonight is a commitment night, a night that should not pass us. And we should not be too zealous. Just be spiritual. Don't push it too much. Don't. You don't need to. In mustahabbat, the Holy Prophet is saying, when you want to do mustahab act, don't push yourself too much. Prepare yourself for it so that you should want it. That when dua, for example, when we're going to recite dua Joshan Kabir. Joshan Kabir is a dua given by Jibrail to the Holy Prophet. Joshan Kabir means a big shield. We're living in a world today where the enemies are attacking us every day. Every hour we are under attack. If not shaitan, who's the arch enemy, innahum lakum aduhum mubin, you've got humans who are shayateen. Because you know shaitan, the root word, shatana, is that which is base. Base things become shaitan. Shayateen is plural. Iblis is shaitan. Humans are also shaitan. In fact, the Holy Prophet has mentioned the word shaitan even for bacteria. Things that harm you, the Prophet is saying there is shaitan. There's some people read hadith, they say, don't let your mustache go over your lip because there's shaitan on it. People say, what kind of a devil is living on my mustache? It's true. What shaitan here, the Prophet is implying, Imam Ali mentions, is that this is the kind that harms you. Anything that harms you, the generic term is shaitan. So you, you and I need to understand that this shaitan that is prevalent in us, among us, with us, needs to be moved away. It's destructive. We are being hit constantly. We're constantly, today, the geopolitical situation of the world is for you to call yourself a Muslim, you're walking on a tightrope. Forget that. If at least you had a pseudo-Islam, crazy kind of sentences, they'd love you. <laughs> they'll help you. They'll even pay you. Mm. Speak the truth. You're a danger. We're going to monitor you carefully. We're going to split words. Because you could be a potential threat. Yeah. Yeah, just like Imam Ali was a potential threat to the Banu Umayyah. Just like Imam Ali was a potential threat to all those who circled around the Prophet. Because he was Furqan. If that's what it means, yeah, that's right. We are a potential threat. So don't we need protection? After all, who are we? We're nothing. Our words mean nothing. If Allah doesn't protect us, what good are we? So the night of... Uh, Laylatul Qadr, when Joshan Kabir is recited, you find some people, they yawn, they're frigiding, they can't sit. He's like, yeah, Subhanaka, ya Allah, they look 27, oh my God, 73 more to go. <laughs> I can't handle this. This is too much. How many Subhanaka, ya Allah, ya Allah, tal khawt, tal khawt, I'm gonna read, Allah, can't you hear me once? Al khawt, al khawt, khalas. No. What Allah is doing with the hundred is He's testing you. How much do you love me? Look, when a husband loves his wife or when a wife loves her husband, she can say to each one to the other side, I love you, I love you. You never get tired. You never get tired. You keep doing crazy things. They say, well, you're doing crazy things. Say, but I love this person. You're working 18 hours a day. He said, yeah, I love this person. You find a mother suffering for the child. Say, mother, what are you doing? She said, I love this person. When the child is doing something beautiful for the mother, he said, what are you doing? She said, I love my mother. 
I'll do anything for her. See, that love for Allah, hundred times, subhanahu And look at the amazing thing, that when we love our mothers, I know. When I love my mother, there's a selfishness in me. For she gave me birth, she suffered. She is the one who took care of me, and she's the one who's taking care of me. Sure, there is a reciprocal love, where I'm receiving something. What about love of Allah? What does he receive? Nothing. All he wants from me is for my own benefit. That's when Rasulullah says, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَةَ I want no reward from you, except that you have mawadda, this mutual love for my near ones, Ahlul Bayt, and the beneficiary is not even Ahlul Bayt. Subhanallah, look at the one-way street of the Rahmah of Allah, when Allah says, Allah nuru samawati wal ard, mathalu nuri ka mishkatin fiya misbah, al misbah fi zujaja, al zujaja tu ka annaha kawka bandurriyun yukadu min shajaratin mubarakatin zaytunatin la sharqiyatin wa la gharbiya. Allahu Akbar, Surah Al-Nur, verse number 35, Read this when you get a chance tonight and see how Allah is showing His mercy upon us. He said the similitude of God is like light. You will notice light doesn't take, it only gives. Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This is the Lord we're talking about. The Lord that you and I should be passionate about. Not some great football player. We want to kiss His hand. There was a big football player who was my neighbor, you know. Art Monk who used to work, play for the Washington Redskins. Oh, you should have seen how crazy I was when I was a teenager. Watching everything he did. Oh, he's my neighbor, you know, he's a big superstar. I never made a dollar from him. Never got hidayah. Not even one wise sentence like Hassan, you know, worship your Lord. <laughs> so, he's an entertainer in his own rights. But what about what Allah gives me? I evaluate him. And I said, you know what, that's entertainment, it's good. Hollywood entertainment entertains me, good. As long as it's not indecent, no problem. Entertain me. But at the end of the day, the entertainment only goes so far. What's my value? Allah said, what about me? Look at me, I care for you so much that even this love that I have given to you is for your own benefit. Then when I ask you, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We did not create jinn wal ins, meaning the jinn, those creatures that are made of smokeless fire and in sun, except to worship Allah, even at that level, Allah did not do it for His own benefit. What is Allah going to benefit? Allah is Samad. Allah says, When you do wrong, there is nothing to Allah. It doesn't do anything to God. When you do good, you do good for yourself. Allah doesn't say it's for me. Never. Can you imagine somebody who loves you, who cares for you so much? That they do nothing but for your benefit and there is zero benefit for them, you will never find a human being like that. Except Allah, His messengers, and His Imams, Ahlul Bayt, and His members. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Look at the verse I started with to show you the power. Surah Al Baqarah, verse 186. Allah says, Wa idha sa'alaka. عبادي أني فإني قريب. This verse, by the way, verse number 186 in Surah Baqarah is the only surah, is the only ayah. I mean, this ayah 186 is the only ayah in the Quran where Allah addresses Himself as I seven consecutive times, seven times, all in one sentence. I, 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 my, I. Wow. When Allah said, نحن Huh? We create. You know it's creation? Quran uses plurality most of the time. You find destruction, Allah says we. When it's philosophical, he. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Philosophical. But when God wants to talk to me, when he wants me to worship him, he says I. That's the style of the Quran. Quran uses plurality. Why? When it says we, it means he's so above us. That's one. Two, because he's used angels and other beings to intercede on his behalf. Man illa bi Who can intercede on his behalf except by his permission? So here the Quran is mentioning I. So look at the look at the ayah. وَإِذَا And look at the verse before it. The verse before it, verse number 185. Hmm? 
شهر رمضان الذي انزل في القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فيرس 185 فيرس 186 الله سيز واذا سالك عبادي اني فاني قريب when you when when my believers ibadi ask you sa'alak ibadi about me tell them i am near subhanallah what a verse god is telling me you have to come to me tonight the night of laylatul qadr is a night of ibadah It is a night of ibadah. It is a night of resolution, and it is a night for prayer. When I say prayer, you will see the value of prayer. That one take. Let me describe this ayah first, so that we don't lose this chain of thought. It says, "Fa'inni qarib." Allah says, "Nahnu." See here. Allah is using a philosophical نحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد We are closer to them than their jugular vein Me But here Allah is saying فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان I reply their prayers when they ask me إذا دعاني Then there's a condition فل Therefore فل يَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Therefore let them reply me وَالْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And have faith in me لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that they will be rightly guided Subhanallah What a beautiful continuum of ver- one verse So powerful that touches the heart That at the end of the day brothers and sisters Let's assess it rapidly within the short time that I have to present You will see that if you and I are sick And people are sick in this world today. Whether it's physical sickness, it's spiritual sickness, a, we all have some kind of sickness in our souls. We all do. You will notice no money can solve it. Some people, they have a lot of money, but they have a lot of problems. So if any one of us comes to the conclusion that money solves problems, you've got it wrong. If you go to the doctor and the doctor says you got cancer, You can never say to the doctor, I'll pay you a million dollars more, get rid of it. The doctor says you got cancer, even if you pay me all the wealth in the world, I don't have control of it. You can only do so much. After that, I'm sorry. Then you say, what do you do? So you go to your family, God forbid, you say, I've got this debilitating disease that could be terminal and I am going to leave this world. What does a family do? What can they do? Suddenly, all the plans that they had, all the arrogance that they planned for themselves to show up, suddenly comes like a house of cards. Crumbles in front of them. Their plans are all shattered. Instantaneously, plans get shattered. I tell you, there's a lesson in this about all our lives. Allah is indeed merciful that He has kept our lives in a very smooth motion. Huh? It's a blessing of Allah, but when it comes once in a while and it strikes, You don't know where it's struck from, and it changes everything. Like that story of a man. I always use this example, because I think it is the most amazing example. Where a couple just got married, and they had beautiful twins. The husband just got a raise in his job. The wife is well established. The business is doing well. They just purchased a new house. It's a true story, by the way. They're going on vacation, and they have two children in the back. The husband's driving and a drunk driver comes and hits them head on. Everybody dies except the husband is alive, intact. Wow. What do you do? My God, how do you even start to think? What do you console such an individual? Everything he has planned is shattered. And Allah, people ask, where is God for this? Allah is saying, don't you know? This is how you are. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We made man in a state of trepidation. Why? Is it because Allah is not merciful, astaghfirullah? No. Allah says this kabbat, this trepidation, is so you wake up and you come to me. Your peace, your tranquility is with me. Whether you're alive or you're dead, only I can give you consolation. I take that very seriously. Very seriously. 
Whether it's money, it's power, it's this public life, whatever. To me, none of this has meaning unless it's feasibility. It has to be. Otherwise, it's useless. For what? What are we, what are we going to do for each other? How much of my bank am I going to fill? Ask Bill Gates. He's getting rid of it. Ask Warren Buffett. He's getting rid of it. Why is he getting rid of it? I thought we had an insatiable desire for wealth. You notice they say it's a burden. It's a big burden. Imam Ali mentioned, he said, how amazing. Humans amass wealth, yet they have to protect it. Yet when they gain knowledge and wisdom, it protects them. How sad that humans are so busy with the material when they should be gaining knowledge and wisdom. So that their iman increases, so that their submission increases. But I tell you between us all, nothing is more beautiful in this world in its purest sense than when someone prays for you sincerely. Money, material are all good things and they have their value and we need to be open-handed when it comes to giving. But there is no better giving than giving du'a. Then giving this prayer, when you look at a person, even a non-Muslim, and you say to them, I pray for you. I tell you, I've, I've even spoken like this to an atheist, and he said, thank you. I said, I know you don't believe in it, but I still pray for you. I pray for your guidance. You know, uh, Sayyid Tijani, the one who speaks here, may Allah bless him for his enormous work. Incredible work this man has done in the ways of Ahl al-Bayt. You know, when he wrote the book, from Mahdadayt and so on. An amazing work. How many people have come to Islam because of that? He says, when I was a non-follower of Ahl al-Bayt, I heard about this Imam Musa ibn Jafar al kadim I made dua sincerely, he told me. He says, I prayed sincerely that may Allah give hidayah to Musa ibn Jafar al kadim <laughs> He says, and he's the Imam, he always replies to me. He also made dua, look where I am today. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. You notice the power of prayer? You'll be surprised. Something happens to you. When good things come your way, you wonder, what is it? Shaitan tells you, oh, you must be intelligent. You're bright. You're smart. You're really good. Or it was just a chance. Good luck. You know, people say, good luck. What luck? To me, luck is within the rahma of Allah. Otherwise, there's no such thing as luck. If you say good luck, it's the rahma of Allah. Allah has allowed good things to come. So when we say good luck, better be in your heart and mind that it is Allah. Because Allah says, وَلَا يُحَيْتُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمٍ This is Allah talking about the, the Ahl Bayt and the Imams and the Prophet. They can't avail themselves of a little knowledge. Nothing can move in this world without the command of Allah, without the permission of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we say good luck, whatever the case may be, understand that there is wisdom being implanted in us. There is a spirit being implanted in us. There is a knowledge being implanted in us. This is what's driving us. So let us be grateful for tonight's Laylatul Qadr. And the most important thing tonight is that, and I will end inshallah soon with the khutbah of Imam Ali about prayer, but when we go into any prayer, introspect. Forget about everybody else for the moment. Because if I'm going to give charity to you, I have to put my hand in my pocket. See, I can't give charity by putting hand in your pocket. That would be stealing. My pocket. But if I haven't got anything, how am I going to give charity? I'm just talking materially. So when we make dua, you say, Oh Allah, I want to be charitable. I want to do something for you. But how am I going to do it if I don't have the ability? So introspect, question our own integrity, and go into sujood and say, to nafsi. I have done injustice to myself. Oh Allah, I am not worthy of this prayer to you. But you are so open. Your treasure is so open. That when you say, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبِ And you say, أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Well, I come to you. I know I disobey you all the time. I make false promises with you all the time. I have spoken against you. I have felt that you are not worthy sometimes. I have even doubted you. I have considered myself better than you sometimes. Shame on me. How dare I did that. Oh Allah, infuse that spirit in my heart tonight. That when I go into sujood, make it vibrate for you. Make me feel good. Make me feel confident. Make me want to come to you. Make it that you give me these uh, abilities 
that you answer my prayer. Now you find when a person is sick, they say, Brother, please pray for me. I'm ask, we are asking for your prayer. We say, we pray for you. We pray for you. That our imams used to do that. They used to put their hands up in the air and Allah would accept it. There was a man who comes. Imam Hussain was a young child. He said, I don't have children. Imam would turn and say, Allah will give you one and two and three in the Prophet. You continue, Allah will keep giving him. Because Allah cannot say no to your prayer. That's the power of Ahlul Bayt. You and I are followers of Ahlul Bayt. The night of Qadr is supreme to all the events in the world. I can't stress it enough. And when Allah is asking us in the Quran, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةَ What will make you understand? What is Laylatul Qadr? When the Quran never questions us, meaning Allah is telling me it's very important. Otherwise Allah doesn't ask me. Whenever Allah asks a question before He answers it, it means it's very important. Whenever Allah negates something followed by an exception, it's very important. That's the style of the Quran. I conclude that tonight also is the night in which the Quran was revealed in the full spiritual form. Full spiritual form of the Quran was revealed tonight. It is completely revealed uh, to, the heart, uh, to the heart of the Messenger. Brief introduction. People say that the Holy Prophet received the revelation, it was on the mountain of Nur, Jabal Nur. When was it? It was in Rajab. The Quran says, in Anzal now, fi Laylatul Qadr. Anzal Nahiyah, by the way, is complete. Not in, not in stages, complete. And you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us three forms, three major forms of the Quran. There's a pre existing stage of the Quran, and Allah mentions in Surah Al Waqir, Inna hula Quran Kareem. فِي كِتَابٍ مَكْنُونٍ لَا يَمَسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُتَحَّرُونَ Okay? تَنْزِيلٌ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Most surely it is an honored Qur'an in a book that is protected. Which book? لَوْهِ مَحْفُرُونَ Meaning the Qur'an is an extraction from the protected, guarded tablet known as لَوْهِ مَحْفُرُونَ Then you find that this was taught to the Prophet in Surah Al-Rahman where Allah says Ar-Rahman عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنِ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانِ عَلَّمَهُ ال Bayan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, merciful, the merciful. Allam al-Quran, taught the Quran, created man, khalaq al-insan. You notice this whole Quran was taught to the Prophet in his heart instantaneously. Then, it came in the arranged form. You find in Surah Al-Dukhan, which we're going to recite inshallah tonight. You see Allah says, Hamim wal kitab al-mubin, inna anzalnaw fi laylatin mubarakatin. إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْذِرِينَ This was revealed on this night of Mubarak, this blessed night. فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ In it are wise affairs made distinct. أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ رَحْمَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing that it is an arranged form that was revealed in the heart of the Messenger. Then it came in gradual form to mankind in Surah Al-Isra, for example. Allah says, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَا وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلَ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَى عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثٍ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنزِيلًا We revealed it in stages. I'll discuss these, inshallah, in the next few nights, the tafsir of what it means about the whole stages of the Qur'an. And then there was a post-gradual stage. This part here, Allah says, لَا تُحَرِّكْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعْجَلَ بِهِ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَهُ فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّمِعْ قُرْآنَهُ This piece is very important. Listen to this. Those of you who understand the Qur'an, the Arabic, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَا And when you recite, فَاتَّمِعْ Follow it. فَاتَّمِعْ قُرْآنَ After reciting, don't just recite for barakah. Recite it and follow it. Here, by the way, Allah mentions, إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ It is upon us to collect it. Historically, people say after the Prophet's departure, the Quran was collected and put together. And you know, people were deciding which Quran, and then some accusations have come for the followers of Ahlul Bayt, that they have a different Quran from the rest of the Ummah. These are all satanic accusations. There is only one Quran in the world among the Muslim Ummah. Among the Muslim Ummah, there are those who are fringe groups, small groups like Rashid Khalifaites and so on. They are fringe groups, they are not even significant in the Muslim world. There is only one Qur'an among the major followers of the five schools of thought, there is only one Qur'an. There is no two Qur'an. And the way it has been arranged, 
Based on the verse alone right here, it is evidence that the Qur'an was arranged correctly. Because Allah says, إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعُهُ It is upon us to collect it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us historically that when Jibreel came in the last year of the Prophet's departure, he came twice that year. The Prophet said he has come twice to me to ensure, to validate everything that has been revealed to me before its completion. The Qur'an, which is the miracle of the Prophet, will be left in scattered places. It's absurd. Think about it. Every messenger that brought a miracle, because every prophet and messenger has to bring miracles. What was the miracle of the Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was the miracle? You find Isa Alayhi Salam brought the dead back to life. He cured the leper. Musa Alayhi Salam turned the stick into snake and his hand from his hand when he put it, light would come out of it. One of the nine signs that Musa Alayhi Salam was given. Every prophet was given a sign. What is the sign of the prophet? You'll find the greatest sign Allah gave was the Quran. Because every previous prophet, their sign died when they died. Their miracles died with them. Only the Holy Prophet, upon his departure, his miracle remained. Subhanallah. Because if you look, all the others were tampered with. The Injil, the Torah, these are all miracles also. But Allah allowed them to. For mankind, He allowed them. But this one, Allah says, no, you will not touch this one. So it's a miracle. You think our Prophet will leave this world without compiling it by the command of Allah and giving it to us? When He says, إِنِّي تَارِكٌ فِيكُمْ وَالثَّقَلَيْنِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَإِثْرَةِ أَحْلِ بَيْتِ That I'm leaving with you two heavy things. What did He say? Scattered pieces of paper all over the place, which inshallah, someday when you get the right mind together and hopefully you get a good leader, you put it together inshallah, right? Yeah, you do this? Because it's a very heavy thing, you know, thaqalain. I mean, a very heavy thing. Can you imagine this absurdity? Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Subhanallah. So the irony is, the Quran was collected in its fullest form. It's protected. Why am I speaking like this? Because I don't want anybody in the Muslim Ummah, especially, ever to doubt the veracity and the authenticity and the significance of this great book, Al Quran, which is Al Furqan. Subhanallah, it is a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't have time, I conclude here. I was going to inshallah speak about the essence of the Qur'an and I will do that some other night. But I wanted to take, I wanted to take full benefit for tonight's Laylatul Qadr. That to me, all these discussions we have, intellectual discussions are good. But there comes a point, and I've seen some people by the way, they're too rigid in their logic and rationale, too rigid. And I say, watch out. Being rational, logical, systematic is good. But don't just hang there. Don't just say, that's it. God loves me. No. Allah wants you to leap. Leap forward. Leap with ibadah. Put your face on the ground. Cry. Beg Him. Ask Him. Ask Him to make you fly in the spiritual world. Allah does not prevent us from that. Tell Him to give you more. The intellectual part is a springboard. You cannot jump to Allah without the springboard. You, no one can jump on quicksand. Only the philosophies in the world, to me, is all quicksand. They all got faith. <laughs> I say, how can you jump when it's quicksand? When you have a real springboard, firm, and it throws you towards the sky, towards Allah, where our Iman just takes us there. Let's take it tonight in the state of the realm of spirituality, the realm of crying, the realm of reflection, the realm of experiential faith, not intellectual only, which we call haqqul uh, yaqeen. Let's try to get into haqqul uh, yaqeen. I apologize, my time, I'm looking at the time and I really do not want to take the critical time of my respected Sheikh Haider, may Allah bless him. But I'm going to read very quickly and then I will conclude inshallah. Imam Ali. He says, realize this truth. This is about prayer and I conclude. My son, that the Lord who owns and holds the treasures of heaven and earth has given you permission to ask and beg for them and has promised to grant you prayers. He has told you to pray for his favors that you may be granted and to ask for his blessings that, he may, that uh, they may be bestowed upon you. He has not appointed guards to prevent your prayers reaching him, meaning Allah listens to all our prayers, nor there is any need for anybody to intercede before him on your behalf. Here, by the way, quick explanation. There is no need for intercession. No need, meaning Allah doesn't, like in, in certain other, other religions, you cannot pray until you go to a priest or to a scholar and you can only pray through them. No. Imam says, no, Allah is prayed directly. But when you pray directly, don't forget, 
الدعاء لك بحق محمد وأنت المحمود وبحق علي وأنت الأعلى وبحق فاطمة وأنت فاطر السماوات والأرض وبحق الحسن وأنت المحسن وبحق الحسين وأنت قديم الإحسان صلى الله عليه محمد وعلى محمد I'll read it very fast because this is very important and then inshallah you'll bear with me He says, if you go back upon your promise with Allah, if you break your vow or start doing things that you have repented from, He will not immediately punish you. Neither does He refuse you His favors and grants in haste. Meaning He gives it to you sometimes very quickly. And if you repent, once again He neither taunts you nor betrays you, though you may be fully, though you may deserve both. Meaning you deserve to be taunted. But Imam says, Allah doesn't do that. Listen to this. But He accepts your repentances and forgives you. He never grudges His forgiveness nor refuses His mercy. On the contrary, He has decreed repentance as a virtue and a pious deed. As they say, God gives and forgives, man takes, right? Man gets and forgets. The merciful Lord has ordered that every evil deed of yours will be counted as one and every good deed and pious action will be rewarded tenfold. Allahu Akbar. He has left the door of repentance open. He hears you whenever you call Him. He accepts your prayers whenever you pray to Him. You beg to Him to grant you heart's desires. Look what Imam is saying. Ask Him to grant you heart's desires. You lay before Him the secrets of your heart. As Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Surely the one who begs his Lord in the dark of the night is the one who gets the big reward. You tell Him about all the calamities that have befallen you and misfortunes which face you and beseech His help to overcome them. You invoke His help and support in difficulties and distress. You implore Him to grant you long life and sound health. You pray to Him for prosperity and you request Him such favors and grants that none but he can bestow rewards. Imam continues briefly, he says, but when you pray from him, to him, and if he doesn't grant you something, don't lose faith. It is probably not good for you. And don't, and Imam mentions here, I'm just paraphrasing quickly, he says, and when you ask for something, be careful what you ask for. Make sure it is good for you. Otherwise, you will wish you never got it. Allah mentions in the Quran beautifully, He says, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Wa asa an tuhibbu shay'an wa huwa sharrun lakum. That which you don't like and it happens to you, it's good for you. Wa huwa khayrun lakum. Wa asa an tuhibbu shay'an, that which you love and you don't get it, it could be harmful to you. So Allah keeps it away. Let's be grateful whatever. And whatever Allah gives us. La in shakartum. If you are grateful to Allah, Allah will give you more. Let's be grateful for whatever we have. Assess tonight all the gifts of Allah, inshallah, and Allah will give us this great status in this world and in the hereafter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana aghfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna lil iman. Wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghillan lil ladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka رؤوف الرحيم وآخر الدعوة أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته